Okay, so I'm here with Chris Prince of the uh, Gears team. Chris, you put out a new release today. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So uh, the release today basically adds three major new features to the Gears APIs. Uh, the first one is around cross-origin um, usage. So the idea there is that Gears has a very strict security model so that A.com can't talk to B.com. So the idea is that um, sometimes, I mean, that, that's an important um, security model to have in place, but sometimes you do need to have two different subdomains talk to each other. Um, so what we've done is through an opt-in mechanism, a.app.com can talk to b.app.com through the, the worker pool. So that's, that's one use case. Um, another one is that you can imagine a third-party site may want to expose an API to the world. So something like contactlist.com may want to have a, a contact list API that any third party can um, talk to and, and get people's contacts from. So that's another really interesting use case, cross-origin stuff. Um, the second major feature set that we've had in this release is worker pool improvements. So the idea there is that based on feedback from the community after we did the initial launch, um, there were some things that were a little bit hard to use. So now we provide a way to create a worker, not just by passing in a blob of text, but also by um, passing in a URL. And Gears will fetch that URL, pull down the script, and start running it. So a lot more like people would normally write their script code today. Um, the second thing there is that errors that happen inside a worker are now a lot easier to debug because we bubble up those errors to the main parent thread. And then the third big piece that we've added in this release is two new modules. Um, and these are the HTTP request module and the timer module. And the reason we added these was because inside a worker you don't have access to the DOM. You don't have all the, the things you would normally have. Um, and for things like synchronization, it is really important to have the capability to do network requests and to set timers and get, get callbacks. So that's really what the HTTP request object and the timer object are aimed at. And these are exposed in the main thread as well, but um, it looks like the, the worker pool is going to be the main use case where those are important. So when you uh, create from the URL, um, do you have to, does that tie into the, the cross-domain work? Do you have to explicitly say allow across domain or does it just happen automatically? Right. Well, the caller just says create from URL. And if, if you happen to be doing a cross domain um, creation, then the callee has the choice of opting in. And so if the callee expects to be used across domains, that code can say allow cross domain. If the callee doesn't expect to be used across domains, then it won't be opting in. And this is really in place as a security measure so that um, attackers can't just load arbitrary JavaScript workers and cause crazy things to happen. Great. So the HTTP request object, uh, how does that differ from XHR? It's very similar. Um, we've cut back a couple of the features for this initial release just to, to keep it uh, limited in scope. But in terms of implementation, we are using the, the browser's underlying XHR in this release for implementing those guys. Great. Well, thanks so much for chatting with us. Sure. Thanks.